All right, Pokemon fans, I want to do a video about one of the, I guess you could say, underdog characters of the X and Y series, and I'm talking about Sawyer. To me, Sawyer seems to be the mixture of Max, May's little brother from the Pokemon Advance series, and Conway from the Diamond and Pearl series, just because, you know, he's like a little kid, so to speak, with a green hair, pretty much very smart by the books kind of character. It's kind of funny because, you know, he really goes around with his textbook, you know, writing down everything that he learns from his um, journey as a Pokemon trainer. And he really relies on his, you know, textbook notebook during battle, which proves to be more of a distraction than a benefit because, you know, let's say the opponent uses a off the wall tactic. And honestly, Ash Ketchum is kind of like the Goku of Pokemon, if you will, where he's pretty much kind of an idiot outside of battle where he's an absolute genius in most in most situations because his off the wall tactics can get past type advantages and just you know help him to a victory so whenever an opponent does something that's not in his book well Sawyer's book that's when he loses his cool resulting in him losing a battle he really reminded me of the trainer I forgot his name like Sake or something from I'm going old school Pokemon Johto he was the guy with the scissor that ashes he, the one who said defeat Heracross with a false swipe he like that guy, you know, pretty much robotic by the books. If somebody, an opponent does something that he didn't calculate, it will throw off his groove. Now, the thing about Sawyer that I liked is the fact that he reminded us, well, he reminded me of like an actual trainer in the video games, how one moment, you know, he's that rival you can defeat with like one of your Pokemon. You can defeat three of his Pokemon with just one of your own, but barely taking any damage. But then, you know, as your journey goes on, before you know it, he's almost, he gets a little tougher. And then as Ash witnessed in the Pokemon series, almost becomes his equal. And I really like that because it showed that he's a character that trains hard. He applies what he le learned through, from victory and defeat into his own battle style. And that reminds me a lot of Conway, how is he, as he would put it, you know, I need to insert this battle data into my memory bank or something like that. He just said something like that after Ash defeating him in the Sinnoh League, so that was pretty funny. And it's pretty cool because, again, being the fact that essentially Pokemon characters can't age because, you know, if everybody else ages around Ash, then he can't be 10 years old anymore. And that was one of the last things he said to Max before they split ways at the Battle Frontier saga that when you become a Pokemon trainer, I promise someday I'll battle you, you know, full on. And the fact that the writers are kind of delivering that promise to the fans, at least in the form of, you know, the Conways and the Sawyer is actually pretty cool. Because every time I looked at Sawyer, I thought of Max with his first Pokemon. And remember, he kept saying that he would love to have a Trico. Lo and behold, Sawyer had a Trico as his starter Pokemon from the Hoenn region. And then he went to the Kalos region. So overall, you know, in his first appearance, battling Luxray and losing, you know, again, he took the defeat. And then learn from it. Then when he battled against the, um, her name escapes me, the trainer with the fairy type Pokemon in the X and Y series. You know, Bagon lost to Spritzy. Again, he took the losses and made it his own. Like, he learned from that. And then Ash, you know, in their first, what, few battles. Oh, well, the first battle with Team Rocket interrupted. And then the three-on-three -three where his Trico evolved into a Grovile. Then the next battle they had where Ash Greninja debuted against Sceptile. It's like Ash, you know, pretty much wrecked house in those battles. But then we get to the episode where, wow, where Ash actually lost to Sawyer, where he pretty much proved to be a very good trainer. And the fact that this guy, he levels up, you know, he levels up, he gets stronger, he learns more. I think one of the favorite moments of that battle where Ash lost was when, uh, if one forgive me my mispronounced name clauncher the blue like shrimp shell lobster fish whatever you want to call it the one with the giant claw essentially after i watched that episode i started using one on my team and like the battle mason and that thing is just with the mega launcher ability the modest nature throw a life over on that bad boy i mean you can water pulse or sphere dark pulse your way to the top that thing is powerful not too fast and not too you know durable in terms of special defense but it is pretty good Pokemon. Now, the moment of that particular battle that caught my interest, that was my favorite part of battle. I believe Halucha was going for like a flying prep. It was basically going in for an attack. And what Clauncher did was it used Dragon Pulse towards the ground to propel itself in the air to dodge. 
I was like, that was sheer Ash Catchem right there. Using an attack like that to his advantage to throw his opponent off guard. I was thinking, as soon as I saw that moment in the battle, I'm like, okay, that's it. Sawyer is officially becoming Ash. You know, he's taking what he's learning from Ash, you know, because Ash is essentially his idol, the one that he has lost to the most, but the one he learns from the most as well. And then, you know, we pretty much all know that the real reason Ash lost that battle was for some reason he was out of sync with Greninja. And Sawyer took advantage of the moment with his Sceptile to launch a devastating combo of Leaf Storm and Leaf Blade, finally defeating his rival. Because remember, um, after evolving to Grovile, Frogadier and Grovile had that rivalry thing going on, and that was pretty cool to see. And a lot, a lot of people gave Sawyer some hate for that. I didn't hate Sawyer for that because he took advantage of the situation, and that's what led to him getting the victory. And then, you know, then he saw him, well, his idol lose to, you know, the ice gym leader and that pretty much showed it's like wow okay ash isn't you know i don't think Sawyer was looking down on ash in terms of wow it's like i finally surpassed my idol and now it's like he's left behind in the dirt it's more like he could tell something was off with ash hence why he's like okay we're going to challenge each other in the league that's when i want to fight the real ash catch him again lo and behold that did happen when uh the essentially the best battle of the Kalos League. I mean, again, I'm not really going to harp on a lawn and ash out. I, I've been there, done that. I will bring it up in another video, but not this particular one. I think we can all agree that the Greninja slash Ash Greninja versus Sceptile slash Mega Sceptile battle was not only the best Pokemon battle during the Kalos League, but essentially one of the top battles of the entire franchise, movies and everything included. The animation, music, the it was just great to see, you know, Sceptile and, and Greninja kind of going at it. And then Ash and Sawyer kind of have that moment on what looks to be like the uh, fairy terrain, if you will, where or flowery terrain. <laughs> and they're pretty much, you know, just talking mentally, of course, like, you know what, Sawyer? I was scared because one minute you were so far behind me. Next thing you know, you're right on my heels and you surpassed me. And then Sawyer's like, okay, I got to take everything I've learned and win this to show Ash that I'm definitely, you know, a good trainer. And they both gave it their all. That battle was fantastic because I, I was on the edge of my seat. I didn't know who was going to win it. And he came out barely, I mean, Ash Greninja pulled one out. Like, literally, that water shuriken, I mean, that frenzy plant, if, if one of them vines would have hit, that would have been it. Because that was an awesome fight. And we finally got to see Leaf Storm from Mega Sceptile in the anime revealing that it does shoot the tip of his tail off like a Christmas tree missile to launch the Leaf Storm. And apparently it instantly grows back. But uh, we didn't see that. Whatever. It was pretty cool regardless. Now, here's one thing that I really wish they would have done at the end of the Ash versus Sawyer battle. It would have been a good nod to continuity because, you know, Sawyer looks up to Ash. I think one of the best line, if they would have added this line of dialogue, I think this would have made the aftermath of the battle so much better. If, if you know, Sawyer would have said, hey, you know, I want to reach, you know, train and beat you next time, get as strong as you are. And then Ash is like, you know, hey, that's all well and good, but I want to keep training too. So, hey, don't stop training. You know, they had that little back and forth. I wish Ash would have took like a big brother kind of approach and said, you know what? In my first Pokemon League, I only got in the top 16. But look at you, Sawyer. This is your first Pokemon League, and you're in the top four. That would have been a great nod to continuity in terms of, you know, how far Ash has come from his first Pokemon League compared to Sawyer in his first League and how superior he was to Ash during his Pokemon League. It's just amazing that they could have added that one little bit of dialogue. I mean, again, they didn't they didn't add it, but I feel like if they would have just spiced it up, they would have added that little bit of spice, that would have made that battle so much better. Overall, you know, I didn't... There were only a handful of moments I liked in the battle because most of it was rushed, you know, definitely the double knockouts back-to-back -back between Noivern, Salamence, and then Slurpuff and uh, Gudra. Halucha, I, I mean, I didn't really like that battle. I love the entrance, the costume, but the fact that Halucha got knocked out without taking out one Pokemon was kind of, you know, ridiculous. Not to mention Talonflame being left to battle water type. Pikachu was, you know, aside from Greninja was the star of that battle, taking out two Pokemon, the AG Slash battle. is beyond me how those um, uh, bits of lumber stayed airborne so long while Pikachu was running around and AG Slash 
was knocked out between the piece of wood knocked between its shield, <laughs> preventing it from using uh, King's shield. That was that was pretty. That was classic ass right there. I like that. And uh, I think another highlight was definitely the battle with Tierno because again, lightning rod ability taking out Raichu, but then also AG Slash debut battle with King Shield. That was pretty interesting as well. So overall, I like Sawyer. I hope we see more of him. Apparently, he's going to have an active role in the Team Flare arc starting this week. And uh, I don't think he's going to be in the Sun and Moon anime. It would be kind of cool to see him. I don't I don't think I want to see him as a traveling companion with Ash just because if Team Rock is going to be involved, and, you know, they most likely are, you know, they don't want to have Ash's crew, like, overpowered because... The only reason I can see Sawyer along with Ash is if he pulled an Ash catch him where he only brought along one of his Pokemon. But can you imagine if he brought along Mega Sceptile to a new region, how OP he would be? I don't think that's going to happen. Because, again, it would be cool to see Sawyer again like in another Pokemon League or a big battle of Ash. Because he's he has a lot of potential. And his team is amazing. I mean, it was just interesting to see that he's from the Hoenn region. So Sceptile, Slack King, and Salamence are from Hoenn. Are from Hoenn. But then you have, on the other hand, Kalos Pokemon with AG Slash, Slurpuff, and um, his Clauncher. So it was pretty interesting to see the dynamic of his team there. So that was pretty fun. So again, I and the emotion he felt after he was crying, you know, the episode after he lost to Ash. It was just really touching to see that, you know, hey, he was sad. But it, it's just, I wish Ash would have just said, like, hey, look how far you came in your first Pokemon League top four. Come on, man. That would have been, again, a good nod to continuity, showing Sawyer, like, wow, I was like, I'm better than Ash when he first started out. He's been going for years, but apparently they can't use the years because that will be like, he's not 10 years old. <laughs> but, again, Sawyer, to me, was a great character. He's the kind of character I like to see in a Pokemon anime where you see him actively training, getting stronger, learning from his defeats, pretty much doing what Ash should have done in, like, the Diamond and Pearl and Unova series, using everything he's learned up until that point and then utilizing that into a solid battle style. And that's one reason I didn't. I love the Sinnoh arc. That was one of my favorite arcs. I feel like, and Paul's my favorite rival. One of these days I'll do a video on him. The one thing I didn't like about the Diamond and Pearl series is the fact that Ash was more concerned about showing Paul that his way is the best way to raise Pokemon. And that's what affected his losing streak to him so much. Like he was more concerned about, as Rourke would put it, you know, Hey, who are you battling here, me or Paul? Because during the match with Rourke, his, the one where he actually lost in the first round, well, the first battle, he was more concerned with showing Paul up than actually defeating his opponent. And then that's one of the annoying quirks about the Dominant Pearl series where at, every time Ash would reminisce about Paul, especially after his loss at uh, Lake Acuity, hey, you know what? Uh, Paul actually takes everything he's learned from his journey and then, you know, helps that to help his Pokemon get better in battle. Well, Ash, I mean, of all the leagues and different regions you've been through, if you would have done those things up until that point, not to mention rotating your Pokemon instead of using the same ones over and over again, you might actually want it more than, you know, just the Sinnoh League victory. So, overall, I felt like Sawyer was a good rival for Ash because he was an as, a unexpected rival. You know, one minute he's, you know, learning from Ash. You know, he's way, he's like a beginning trainer but then the next day you know he's up at your level so again Sawyer to me was a great very great trainer you know given the whole Alon mess if it was Sawyer and Ash in the final battle of the league and that battle where we saw Ash Greninja win with that giant shuriken was the victory that gave Ash the Kalos League I would have been satisfied because that was a pretty epic battle a bit lackluster during the initial part of the battle where substitutions really weren't utilized and there were too many ties or, you know, knockout versus for knockout. So that's one reason I didn't really enjoy the battle. But again, the Sceptile Greninja, that made up for everything else that happened in that battle. So again, let me know your thoughts. Uh, did you like Sawyer as a character in the Pokemon anime? Because again, he really reminded me of a blending between uh, Conway and Max. And I really do hope we see more of him. You know, again, maybe he doesn't have to be like a main character in the sun and moon anime but he is the kind of character that i would like to see again because he to me really represents us as trainers you know we get those games and we aren't that good at first well you know I'm, unless you've been playing for a while and you know the types and everything but let's just say sawyer is like that new trainer like the new 10 year old who gets their first you know video game and goes at it they lose but then they gradually level up and then next thing you know they're hanging with the big dog so again 
What did you think of Sawyer? Did you like him as a character? Did you, thought, did you think he was annoying? Did you really like him a lot? Would you like to see him in an upcoming anime? And honestly, if Ash and Sawyer was the final battle of the Kalos League, and that's the one that gave Ash his vic if that would have given him the victory he deserved, do you think that would have been a climactic battle? I really think it was, given the magnitude of it, because I've said it once, 15 times, 100 times. The epicness and the intensity of the Ash Grin well, the Ash Greninja Mega Septile battle, I feel like that was like a 15, while the Mega Charizard X versus Ash Greninja battle was more like a four. Like, I didn't feel like there was any attachment to it. Yes, I mean, the argument stands that, well, I mean, you just look at it this way, the uh, frog and deer gro um, grovile rivalry at, lasted for us such, such a long time when you compare that to the Greninja Charizard. True, it's a bit of a rivalry there because Charizard defeated Greninja each time they battled. I mean, the first time that Blast Burn knocked it out. But keep in mind that Greninja had taken a lot of damage. If I'm not mistaken, it took a flamethrower and like two thunder punches before it transformed to Ash Greninja and then it lost to Blast Burn. The second battle, similar to the battle with Diantha, Ash Greninja was winning, but then that, that's when Ash Greninja passed out. And then they get to the league battle and Greninja lost again. So here we are with Charizard being undefeated by Greninja. But again, I don't feel like the hype was there. But allegedly, there is a theory that I'll be making a video about soon of a possible conspiracy of how Ash lost the Kalos League. So keep your eyes peeled. So again, let me know your thoughts on Sawyer, and I'll see you all in the next video.